down and play. Ready to go. That's what, and notwithstanding some of the signs that I saw come, that's why 81 million Americans voted for me. The largest number of votes in American history. How you doing? This is Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. So this is just going to be an off-the-top episode. A normal off-the-top st uh, style where I go over the news and different things and how I feel about it, you know? So we're only 13 seconds off. But, you know, like I keep saying, the news every single day is just more and more dramatic, no matter which way you look at it. Hollywood writers couldn't even write it better in some aspects. But <clears throat> right off the bat, as a parent, I got to ask, how many other parents actually feel like the teachers and teacher unions and the Department of Education, they've just simply gone too far? Now, there's a lot of heated uh, conversation going on right now because the FBI have announced that they're going to start investigating parents that have complained about schools or teachers or parents that have directly uh, made, you know, extremist comments towards a school and teachers. Now, let me just clarify something right now. The media is doing a bang up job on doing what they've always done. They take that violent and extreme rhetoric and they put that forward and they don't really talk about the bulk majority. Okay. And that's what we're going to try to do. So <clears throat> Yes, there are validations that need to be investigated. It is not okay for parents to threaten to bomb, shoot, or anything else a public school. It is just not acceptable. Now, that is why I say some of those cases are actually warranted for them to investigate, just like they should have been investigating all this domestic terrorism that's been going on. Now, with that said, I, for instance, think that majority of parents are doing exactly what they should be doing. Once your child gets to a certain age, that is when the teachers start pushing the socialist and all these other, their personal viewpoints onto the people. Now, what age is that? Primarily, if you've been reading the news and paying close attention, glo uh, attention globally to where it is and like what age group, it tends to be around the age of around six to seven that they start doing the cheesy stuff. But the real problem begins around, I would say middle school and high school nowadays. Before, back in the day, it was common knowledge that colleges breed leftists. Like your kid would come back more liberal than what they were before. It was common knowledge. Now that was because of the 60s <clears throat> and all the things that happened during that time period. Now, however, it is more alarming at the fact that it's becoming younger and younger and younger. Now, let me stress this out. Not all teachers are bad. I personally actually support the education system. I love knowledge. I've always prided myself on it. It's something I make sure my kids appreciate. Uh, education is something that we put forward a lot in my household. So, not all teachers are bad. Not all teachers are pushing this agenda. Not all teachers are doing this, but there is an alarming number of teachers and prof uh, educational professionals that are doing it. And there's ongoing cases of it. The most recent extremist one being an Antifa member at an Atomas high school that was pushing his agenda onto the kids. And he flat out admitted what it's all about. We all heard it. If you're a Republican or you follow all that type of news and, and all that kind of stuff, you've already done watched it and you've already done seen it. So we're not going to really go into it. It's just more propaganda that they spew out all the time. So I actually say the parents that's taking the kids out of school, that's the best course. And here's why. <clears throat> States, they make so much money off of every single student that is in that school. So the classroom setting that right there is a money market to the department of education why do i say that because we all pay in by taxes a certain number of our taxes goes to the local to the state and federal department of education so this goes by whatever numbers or however they do it now ultimately if you if enough students are pulled out of school like majority at a certain age, which right now I'm honestly going to say 
before I probably said middle school, let's go more realistic. <clears throat> let's go high school. That's probably around the time that you should start pulling your kids out because that is when the age group that they're pushing it the most. And I normally wouldn't say that as a supporter of majority of educators. However, there is an alarming number, primarily in California, Washington, New York, um, you know, in bigger cities like Detroit and, you know, and all that. So we all know the cities. So that's primarily seems to be where it's coming out. But, you know, then again, Oklahoma University was caught up pushing CRT after the governor signed a bill against it. So you're talking after that bill was passed, they illegally was pushing CRT anyways. So what I'm saying is they violated, as a university, they violated state law at that point. That's a fact. And that's what I'm saying. So you need to be paying very close attention to what they're teaching your children. Ask your kids questions. Get involved and ask them, what is your teacher talking to you about? You know what I mean? Or if your kid says something that's off the Richter, ask them more detailed questions like, where did it come from? Did you hear it from them? What's going on? And I'm saying this for a reason. If you paid attention to this channel and the episodes that I've produced, then you've already noticed the amount of socialism that we've already gone over. Hours worth. Okay, like literally I put together like clips of like the best of the best of describing all the different forms of socialism. So even if you support it, it's all there. Um, <clears throat> with that said, they are pushing that agenda further and harder than they ever had before. And normally it would be cause of concern, but it is just one after another, after another, after another. We even have that state representative that was caught up recently literally saying in his campaign speech he was campaigning and giving his speech and literally said in the speech basically that parents need to shut up and let the schools do what they want that's not acceptable that is called dictatorship that is called communism that is called fascist that is called socialist that is called all of that same bracket no matter which way you look at it and that's what it's all about But it's just happening more and more at an alarming rate. Now, farther, farther along this conversation, because I, didn't, I don't want to do a really long episode. I was just planning on stepping out here real quick. So let me just state this and clarify this. I've said often on this show that although as a Christian, I disagree with the LGBT agenda. With that lifestyle, let's put it like that. Now, I have friends and family members that are part of that community. So as an American, I actually feel like they have a right to do what they want to do. For me, being raised in Northern California, I went to school with a ton of them. It was like a common thing to the point to where it wasn't even noticeable. Nobody really cared. There was so many people off and on and you were exposed to it everywhere. It was just an everyday thing. Nobody really cared. You know what I mean? Um, in fact, majority of the time, if there was an altercation over something like that, most of the people in the public would actually jump in and defend the person. But here's where they messed up. Once they allowed that issue to go into the destruction of the nuclear family and team up with CRT and team up with BLM and team up with Antifa, and start literally openly saying that they're coming for the children and there's nothing as a parents that we can do to stop them. Not once, not twice, not three times, but multiple times over and over and over again. These aren't isolated incidences. They happen. Everybody was around that saw them. Uh, they are around forever. <clears throat> One of the ones that got me the most being from Northern California was the San Francisco men's choir that did that skit where they said, if you think that our, if you think that our agenda is coming for your children and they started laughing, paused and said, then you're correct. It is. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I was like, we got to draw the line. PBS is promoting it uh, through the kids, like to the kids through the cartoons. Why is that cause to concern? <clears throat> 
if you're familiar with basic psychology and basic sociology, then you know how psychological conditioning can actually work. And that's basically what they're doing. Now, if you're even in a lot of my listener base, they're true crime fans. So you know what grooming is, correct? You know what it means when somebody says they're grooming somebody. So that, to me, is what they're doing. They're trying to groom our children to accept that lifestyle is normal through kids' television, through music, through movies, and through entertainment television, and even worse now, educational television like PBS, which is, by the way, public broadcasting system. If enough people protest against it, I believe it has to be pulled or there has to be some kind of legal implication behind it, neither here nor there. So that's where the issue became a heated thing for me because I'm a parent. I have three children. So I'm here to tell you right now, I don't care who identifies as what. If my daughter is going into a restroom and I don't care what you identify as, if you try to follow her into that restroom, there is going to be an altercation. Period. And the reason for that is, let me give you another example. There was a guy when I was homeless years ago. You're talking in my early 20s. Twin City Rescue Mission in Marysville, California, Yuba County. Um, there was a guy there. And granted, he acted gay as hell. I'm talking fairy status. Feminine walk, the whole nine. You wouldn't have thought anything else normally, unless you looked into him. He had a scar on his cheek. <clears throat> now, Twin Cities Rescue Mission was a men's homeless shelter. Now, we allowed women to eat there at the homeless shelter as a result of that during mealtime in church. Now, this gentleman, or whatever you want to call him, was trying to follow another friend of mine's daughter into the restroom. Myself and another, another guy that lived there at this rescue mission at that time was standing in a hallway, like as a man that you're supposed to do when the little girl goes into the bathroom. This fellow tried to go in there anyways, so naturally the problem got solved. I decided to go to the library and I looked up Megan's Law. Lo and behold, he was a pedophile who performed rape on three different little, on three different, well, not three. That might be too high of a number, but I know for sure it was like two attempted and then a rape on a, on a, uh, by sodomy on a little girl. Now, that's what I'm talking about. And that brings me into another issue. How is women, do you guys feel... If I pull up statistics, I actually have quite a deal of female listeners, as it turns out. But how as females do you feel that they cancel out femininity as a whole? What do I mean by that? I'm going back to grooming and psychological conditioning now. Here's what I'm saying. It is scientifically proven that it is scientifically proven that a man can get pregnant. However, they will die. And it is extremely painful. Why is that? Because it goes against what's commonly called is God designed. Doesn't mean Christian God. It just says God designed. That's a medical terminology I'm throwing out to you by psychological conditioning. Now, what they've done is they're changing definitions. And anything that says female or girl in front of it, they're now changing to make it illegal. And if you proceed to try to use it, they're trying to change a law now to where that is hate speech. So, a woman can no longer say she is breastfeeding. That's going to become illegal. She is no longer able to say feminine body parts. That will become illegal. That's what they're working on, according to different um, legal legal law news forums and stuff like that. Like that's what they're trying to figure out how to do. They want to change the very definition of female organs and try to turn it around to where it's all gender exclusive. So what does gender exclusive exactly mean? 
or as they like to say, fluid. So what are they actually trying to say? Okay. <clears throat> what they're trying to say is a penis is not a penis. Breasts are not breasts. Pachina is not a pachina. Um, they're trying to create new definition and new terms to make it universally fit for female and male. So it doesn't matter if you're a male or female, they're trying to make it to where we don't exist. So if you identify as a female or you identify as a male, they want to make you obsolete. They're going to do this through grooming process of children programming and the Department of Education pushing more and more liberal agendas. This is commonly done in socialist countries. Socialist countries are very fond of pushing their political agendas onto the children. They do this because historically speaking, it actually takes two generations of children between the ages of six to 13 of being psychologically conditioned and groomed before they actually are willing to view things as accepted and changed. Meaning they no longer identify with the old things being normal to the point to where they will become violent to their own families and neighbors to defend the way they view things. This is done through psychologically conditioning and grooming. This is what they're doing with the one gender thing, trying to make that one gender thing or fluid or whatever it is. They're trying to make males and females obsolete and try to say we don't matter ultimately. Why is this actually important? Now we're getting into where it's now we're past females and male and we're moving on to just society in general. Why is that actually important? Ask yourself that. Why is that actually so, so, so very actually important? The answer is because once that happens, you'll have a real Nazi state. You'll have a real Stalin state. That's how they did it. They went after the children. And they went, after the, they went after the college age people and then they went after the children. I have a friend of mine, an old co co-worker, and she's actually very, very, very well known in the community of drum ride in Cushing. And I used to work with this older lady at McDonald's in Cushing. She was from Germany. And she told me one time that she remembers World War II and the village she was living at, how her brothers, the Nazis showed up because they needed the numbers. They were losing men and they needed more troops. So they went to the Hitler Youth Corps and they got guns and they went to the school and she said they had them at gunpoint and forced them to join the army right then or they got shot. That is what it breeds. That's why it's important because that's how these movements actually gain momentum and control. See, right now, it doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. It's actually being proven. We're seeing socialism being tried in America on a political scale for the first time. And ultimately, it's failing. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. Personally, I don't even care about it anymore. Once they did the thing to Afghanistan, I mean, to me, that really changed my mind about a lot of things. Once this administration was willing to actually let Americans die, Again, knowing way ahead of time, and again, you might as well just hand them the key and the guns themselves and let them do it. I was like, you know what, whatever. So <clears throat> I'm trying to have faith that there's a bigger plan at hand and I actually see that happening because ultimately the things I just said, yes, they are hard things to say. And I know they're hard topics to actually listen to but they're reality because now our kids are being affected. You know what I mean? I do support pulling out children at a certain age at a public school now because of the sheer number of socialist and extreme LGBT propaganda issues that the teachers and educators are getting away with. The extremist things that I see teachers post daily and they're getting away with it. Now, that's why that's so crucial to me because 
here's another way to look at it. Let's get off the socialist thing and let's get off the uh, communist thing for a minute. Here's another way to look at it. If enough kids get taken out of school, that affects the money that the Department of Education gets, which ultimately affects the money that the teacher unions get, which will affect the money the teachers are going to get. They're not going to get as much tax breaks. They're not going to get as much programs. They're not going to get as much money to be able to spend on whatever it is they're spending it on. Why? There's not enough students for a validated, a valid reason for them to have that money. See, Washington moves by one color, green. They may, they may say they care about a million other things. They don't. At the end of the day, they care about one thing and one thing only. Money. The holiday season is coming up. It's fast approaching. It's fast approaching to the point to where I'm actually behind schedule myself, guys. Like, way behind schedule. And I'm talking about this. I'm talking about my show. Because... Life is good. I mean, honestly, in one hand and then on the other hand, it's not, right? I mean, I'm working, but then again, I'm having to redo my schedule and figure it out again. And hopefully I do so I can start finishing things up. Because the holiday season is fast approaching. Here's another thing. I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, The founder of Amazon was laughing in that interview, basically saying, thank you to everybody during COVID lockdown because you guys paid for this trip. For me to go to the space. And I, and I was just thinking about it. If everybody actually did go back. To growing their own food. Buying from local agriculture. Meaning local farmers. Uh, finding people that locally hunt and fish. And buy product from them. This is actually going to affect. The overall market. Now what am I saying by overall market? Now I'm talking Go to your smaller ranchers and smaller uh, cattle people and approach them and ask them. You know, if you live in the South Midwest or let's say Texas, um, Oklahoma, Kansas, how many people do you know, like how many people do you see every single day pull up to a subway or gas station with like cows or horses in the trailer? (coughs) Approach them and ask them someday. How much do you think I could get for one cow or for whatever body parts of the cow you want? You know what I mean? And tell them, yeah, I would rather buy from you than buy from Walmart or buy from some bigger cattle person. You know what I mean? Uh, Because there are smaller, what's called smaller commercial cattle. I'm not even talking about them. I'm talking about the mom and pop cattle people. And that's going to create revenue for them. And it's going to de-revenue the government and the state, which is going to make them do what? It's going to make them reevaluate things or at least hopefully make them reevaluate things because at that point, they're losing money. You know what I mean? And if they lose money, that's when the pan is going to hit. Instead of, here's an idea. Don't buy from Amazon during the holiday season. Instead, go to smaller retail stores, preferably mom and pop stores, and buy merchandise from there instead. Make this that one year that you actually do that. Because if enough people in this country actually do that, buy from the mom and pop stores, the couple that can actually survive during this epidemic that's happened over the past you know, year and whatever, if you could actually find them and buy from them and buy from the mom and pop cattle people as opposed to buying online and buying from the bigger chain places, you're going to create a domino effect and that's going to that's going to hit the markets. And once that starts hitting the markets, it's going to start hitting the stock market. Once it starts affecting the stock market, that's going to start affecting the politicians. Once it affects the politicians, they're going to really start freaking listening. See, you could topple buildings, you can light stuff on fire, you can brawl, you could do crazy stuff. I mean, literally, in this country, you could go out. They, we've seen it. We've seen it over the past four years. You could literally go out, shoot people, cause riots, light buildings on fire, um, topple over statues, deface property, uh, assault people. You know what I mean? All for social justice, right? And they're perfectly fine with that. They don't care. Why do you think that is? 
Why do you really think that is? Because this is chess, not checkers. That's why. Yeah, they're going to let you do it because you're helping their narrative. And by narrative, I mean you're helping their wallets. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about you're actually helping them. I'm saying they're literally playing you like fools and taking you to the bank, laughing the whole way. It's kind of like how I felt whenever I saw Pelosi pulling as a, somebody who used to live in Northern California. It's like how I felt seeing her uh, pull out all that expensive ass stuff, you know? Like what the age, man? People in your district are starving. I know for a fact that people in your district are starving. I don't even have to question it. I remember. I remember in a neighborhood seeing people literally not having water and using like eating dry ramen and stuff. You know what I mean? Or cold ramen because all they had was cold water. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I already saw through it. They're playing you. You know what I mean? They don't give a D about anything. But it, if it helps their if it helps their narrative, like if it helps their stock market, if it helps the things they've invested in, if it helps their buddies' companies, yeah, they're gonna tell you they're all about it, man. But they're only doing it because they're making money. But if you take away that money, and you have to take away a lot of that money, if you take away that money, they're going to start listening because they're not making any more. And that's a fact. That's how this really works. They don't care about your extremism. Hell, be more extreme. You know what they're going to do? They're going to call in the National Guard. They're going to declare martial law. That's what they're going to do. And on top of that, all you've done is prove them right. And I'm talking to Republican and Democrats. You know what I mean? I'm talking to both of you. All you've done is prove them right. Literally. Doesn't matter. You're just proving them right. Because you're not affecting their bottom line, man. You're not affecting their pocket. That's why. You know what I'm saying? The sheer fact that all of this political agenda is affecting Hollywood. And that's the reason why you're seeing so many celebrities. Let's be logical about it. Nicki Minaj, all of them. It's affecting their bottom line, man. It's affecting their pockets. Now the politicians are turning against the Hollywood people. See, originally, originally, they relied on Hollywood. They still needed Hollywood to pull off what they needed to pull off. So they were relying on Hollywood. They were relying on the music people. They were relying on the music producers, the movie people. They were relying on the leftist YouTubers. They were relying on it all. But now they're done with them. It's kind of like those memes you see where they're throwing away that Woody doll. <laughs> they're done with them. And now they're speaking out like, okay, enough is enough. But why are they, why are they saying it? Do they truly believe this? Or are they saying it for a different reason? It's, a, it's because now the new tax laws are affecting their pockets. And now that you're affecting their pockets, they don't want to play with you no more. You get what I'm saying here? So why don't you take that same philosophy and apply it to the bigger aspect of global producers, Wall Street, stock markets, and the big pharma? You know what I mean? Instead of going to the bigger, bigger chain places, I've been thinking about this, start going to the mom and pop pharmacists. You know what I mean? Start doing that because I'm telling you, if you do it, if enough people do it, and yes, it does cost a little bit more, but hey, all you left this like spending more money anyways, right? Everything is about how environmentally friendly it is and how you do, you chip in more and you're willing to pay more because it's environmental friendly and this company cares about this and that company cares about that and this company supports this and that company supports that, right? So what difference does it make? Whenever the overall, when the overall fact of the matter is you're going to hit the banks and you're going to hit the Wall Street, which is going to hit the politicians bottom line. Once that happens, they're going to change their tune. But until that happens, they're not going to do it. So, yeah, you can get out as much arsenal as you want. You could topple. You could scream. You could yell. You could do whatever you want. They're not going to care because you're not hitting their pockets and you're proving them right. There's enough of them that said this group is going to do this and the other group 
The other group said that this group is going to do that. So no matter which way you go, you're proving somebody right. But if you start hitting their wallets and their investments and their stocks, then they're going to start crying. That's what made Wall Street bets so great. Whenever they did that, uh, whenever they did that flip-flop, we saw that. You saw Wall Street like overnight. It didn't even take to the next morning. They did it during the night, crying out. This is huge scandal. We need something done about it. Why? Because you were hitting their investments and you were hitting their pockets. That's why. Mark Zuckerberg, the most recent thing. The most recent hacker attack cost him over $5 billion. And what happened? He publicly apologized. Why? Because you hit his bottom line and you hit his wallet. That's why. That's all they care about. They don't care if you're Republican. They don't care if you're conservative. They don't care if you're, they don't care if you're gay, if you're straight. They don't care if you're trans, if you think you're Superman. They don't care if you're polka dotted, if you're a leprechaun. They don't care. All they care about is, are you affecting their money? Because until you do, they don't care about nothing. This is a reason why the NBA recently is really struggling. The, whether you like to see it or not, and yes, more people are starting to go back into the sports, okay? Yeah, whatever. More people are going back into the sports. I have enough listeners that are sports fans, you know? Yeah, they actually are filling up their arenas again. And they're sending a message while they're doing it. And this is hilarious. This is absolutely hilarious. Joe Biden was so offended by this message of F. Biden that the White House actually altered it and changed the, changed the people to saying, we love you, Joe, and made a whole baseball commercial. But why did it was it baseball? Did you wonder that? It's because Joe Biden, throughout his whole entire political career, has been seen at what? Baseball games. Once the baseball game people started yelling out, the MLB fans started yelling out F. Biden and the soccer fans... The White House actually put out a public statement video where they altered it. It was hilarious, as if we didn't already hear it. And, you know, that brings me to another thing. Have you noticed yet that the China Joe Biden administration, have you noticed yet how they think we're all idiots? They really do. Most of the people actually think we're all idiots. Like, they actually think that we didn't hear what we heard. We didn't see what we saw over the past four years. Like, we just forgot that any of it happened. Do you get what I'm saying? And now they're even doing it to the left supporters. You get what I mean? And now you're seeing those supporters flip-flop as well. You remember about a year ago, if you listen to my BLM episodes, I said, give it enough time and they're going to turn on the Biden administration because the Biden administration will turn on them. And what happened? They did just that. The Biden administration did exactly what I said would happen. They turned on them, and now BLM's turned on them. So, this is all going according to what everybody that actually studies history, anthropology, um, psychology, uh, politics, people that have actually studied it, this is all going into what we said would happen. But I can't emphasize enough. I cannot emphasize enough. Keep going after their money because that's where they're affected at. That's where it hits them the most. Because you could actually do whatever you want. I'm telling you right now, you could literally burn down as much stuff as you want to do. And all they're going to do is pour more gasoline on it. Because what's happening? You're feeding into their narrative, and which is what? Their investments. And you're just making them more money in the process. That's all this is. Once you, once you start affecting that income, though, they're going to start listening. But they're not going to listen until then. I'll tell you one other thing that might change their mind, though. If they've seen every single person of race, religion, and creed all marching down the street unified. When was the last time that actually happened? It was a huge historic event. Civil rights. That was the last time it happened. Martin Luther King marching down the street. There was a lot of every type of race in that march. And that scared the living hell out of Washington, D.C. And the reason why it scared the living hell out of Washington, D.C. was because they unified. They didn't, I'm not talking about unified within one race either. I'm talking about 
they unified everybody. And that started affecting their money and they got shooken up to their core. And nothing's been the same since. I want you to think about that. You know what I mean? If that hit me the other day. I was just thinking about it. And I was like, wow, it has been that long since anything like that has actually happened. I bet you they would, sh I bet you they would pee in their pants so quick. It would just be a flood underneath them. You know what I mean? Nothing would scare them more than a bunch of people unifying. And I'm not talking about out of hatred. Uh-uh. I'm talking about true peacefully. Just like they did before. That would scare the living hell out of them. And I'm going to tell you why it would. It would scare the hell out of them to see black, white, Asian, Latino, Indian, native, everybody, Christian, Muslim, LGBT, all unified for peace. All unified for the betterment of our children. That would scare the living hell out of them. And I'm willing to bet Democrats and Republicans within a week after that would actually probably start changing up their tune too. Because that's what they're afraid of. I'll give you another example real quick. A Facebook meme I saw earlier today. I saw a Facebook meme and it was censored. So out of curiosity, I clicked the Y button, right? The meme said, stand up for what's right, even if it's by yourself. It was censored for, quote, being violent, possibly violent and hateful. Really? You know what it shows? It shows they're afraid of unity. It shows they're afraid of everybody actually getting along. It shows they're afraid of everybody actually talking calmly and rationally. And figuring things out. That's what it shows. At least that's that's what it shows to me. So I hope this has been... Um, I hope you guys got a lot from that. And just so you know, real quick, while I still have you here, if you're still here. Um, I am getting some more time to finish this one thing going on. Which is my big episode I'm going to do. It's a very personal episode. Uh, I'm going to announce whenever that date comes hopefully here pretty soon um, and actually start work on that. And I haven't decided yet how I'm going to do it. So I haven't decided if I'm actually going to design it like a regular episode style or if I'm going to design it like an actual movie feature. Um, and then I'm going to start work on the other one. With that said, the Halloween episode I was going to do, I'm thinking about pushing to a different date. I just see that happening. Let me just say that right now. I want to say it'll get done on time, but the way things are going right now, it might get pushed off to a later date. I'm just letting everybody know because I actually am seeing the sub uh, subscriber count going up. So I appreciate everybody sub, and I hope that you guys keep doing it because I am going to be working on stuff. I'm just gearing up. I have a very personal issue going on that I'm not going to publicly talk about. Um <clears throat> And once, once that personal issue is over with, I probably will talk about it publicly, but right now it's not the right time to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> so once that issue gets done, I'm going to have more free time. And that's when you guys are going to see that big episode getting released, which is going to be my life story slash my testimony, my testimony, my life story. I haven't decided if that's going to be the title, but I'm still working with it. Um, and with that said, I have written a little bit more, more on that. So and I just started a new job, too, so you got to add that into the factor. Um, I'm blessed in that way, so I finally managed to find me something, and I'm actually back to cooking. I'm not going to say where yet, but, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So with that said, expect more material coming your way. Oh, real quick, let me put another public dis uh, disclaimer on there. This one is for viewers on my Facebook blog. Now, often... I have sought out guest speakers, and I have actually had to turn down some, and here's why. Let me just say this. <sighs> Sorry, this is a, let me get it, hit this real quick. <clears throat> I 
I just gotta think of how I'm gonna present this. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> all my life, I have stood up against racism and anti-Semitism. That's not gonna change. Um, with that said, to the person and to the people, let me just say that, to the people that got affected by it, what happened was I deleted some comments. I've actually turned down an interview. The reason for that deletion of comments was I will not tolerate racist terminology and anti-Semitic comments on, any, on my Facebook blog or pretty much any of my platforms. Um, <clears throat> I do believe in freedom of speech, so I feel like a show is a little bit different. I have to handle that one a little bit different. But personally, I will delete it or, you know what I mean, if I see it. And I have turned down a guest speaker because I've asked him, are you able to tone down uh, certain words that you like to throw out? Um, <clears throat> because I personally cannot have that on my show. I just, you know what I mean? And... Um, Neither here nor there. I'm going to leave that there, how that, how that worked out. Um, <clears throat> I have friends of mine, uh, close friends of mine that live in Israel and other regions of Africa. I do, um, at one point, and I'm hoping to start it up again, I read with people and go over Bible verses with a lot of people overseas. A good portion of them are in Africa. Um, that and the fact that my wife is also African-American, Puerto Rican and native herself. Um, so I'm not going to tolerate racist or anti-Semitism on my blog posts um, or on like comments or that, you know what I mean? And that's a personal thing to me. That's, that's just how I view it. You know what I mean? I don't like it. I don't got to, I'm not, and I got to look at it like how I would tolerate it anyways. You know what I'm saying? It's not allowed in my household. I don't like it. Let's just throw it out there like that. So that's the reason behind that. But I am always looking for guest speakers. If you want to be on the show, reach out to me. We'll figure something out. Um, I'm gearing up to where I have more free time. So I'll make an official statement. Most likely it will be in the form of a flyer. Those that have listened to the show for a long time know that I'm fond of flyers. So I tend to do that a lot. So at any rate, this has been Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. I'm going to go medicate and have some dinner. Everybody have a good day. Remember what I said. You got to affect the departments and the Wall Street to actually affect anything. Until you affect the corporations, the investors, Wall Street, you cannot affect the politicians. They'll just laugh all the way to the bank. Remember that. Again, Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibe. Everybody have a good night. Later. I know we blow the system up. I mean, obviously, we can't just turn off the spigot on the system we have and then say, hey, everyone in the world should get this new vaccine we haven't given to anyone yet. But there must be some way that we grow vaccines mostly in eggs the way we did in 1947. In order to make the transition from getting out of the tried and true egg growing, which we know gives us results that can be, you know, beneficial. I mean, we've done well with that to something that has to be much better. Uh, you have to prove that this works. And then you've got to go through all of the clinical trials, phase ones, phase twos, phase three, and then show that this particular product is going to be good over a period of years. That alone, if it works perfectly, is going to take a decade. There might be a need or even an urgent call for uh, an entity right. of excitement out there that's completely disruptive, that's not beholden to bureaucratic strings and, and, and processes. So we really do have a problem of how the world perceives influenza, and it's going to be very difficult to change that unless you do it from within and say, I don't care what your perception is, we're going to address the problem in a disruptive way and in an iterative way because you do need both. But it is not 
too crazy to think that an outbreak of an, a novel avian virus could occur in, in China somewhere. We could get the RNA sequence from that, beam it to a number of regional centers, if not local, if not even in your home at some point, and print those vaccines on a patch and self-administer. Caused a near total abortion ban in Texas, it has made it extremely dangerous to be pregnant in Texas where our maternal morbidity and mortality rate is already unconscionably high, especially for black women and pregnant people of color. Texas deserves better. I know firsthand that abortion saves lives. For the thousands of people I've cared for, abortion is a blessing. Abortion is an act of love. Abortion is freedom. We need federal protection now. We need laws that elevate science and evidence and recognize the dignity and autonomy of people accessing care. The Women's Health Protection